Hello, happy believers. This painting is called Silence. What prompted me to paint this was an 8th or 9th century fresco I came across of Saint Anne, the mother of Our Lady. I thought I would paint a modern day version of it. This fresco, discovered in the Faras Cathedral in Old Nubaya in present day Sudan in the 1960s. Silence is mentioned in the Bible and so is the tongue. I will look at the relevant scriptures. First, I will look at silence. In Ecclesiastes 3.7, it says, A time to keep silence and a time to speak. Psalm 46.10 Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Psalm 62.5 For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence. For my hope is from him. When we spend time in adoration, it is always in silence. In the silence, we can read and listen to the word in the Bible and let it speak to us and guide us. Exodus 14.14 14. The Lord will fight for you and you have only to be silent. This is quite extraordinary and true. Sometimes we need only to surrender or let go and a solution will come about. Psalm 141.3 Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. This can be turned into a great prayer, as how many times do we come out with the wrong words and wish we hadn't said anything. Romans 10.17 So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. Faith comes from hearing and reading the word, the Bible. As I've heard it said, we only have one mouth but two ears. In being silent, we can only learn to listen. I would also like to mention here that the apparition in Knock was a silent apparition. No one spoke a word. It is also the only apparition where the lamb appeared on the altar. That is why it is now known as the International Eucharistic Shrine. Some people refer to Our Lady of Knock as Our Lady of Silence. Sitting there in the shrine, in the silence, Our Lady, St. Joseph, St. John the Evangelist, the angels and the Lamb on the altar have spoken to all pilgrims in the silence of their hearts. Moving on to the scriptures, which refer to the tongue. There is one reading which is quite apt. The heading is the tongue, or can be seen in other Bible versions as the taming of the tongue. In James 3, 3 to 12, it reads, We put a bit into the mouth of a horse to make it obey us, and we are able to make it go where we want. Or think of a ship, big as it is, and driven by strong winds. It can be steered by a very small rudder, and it goes wherever the pilot wants it to go. So it is with the tongue. Small as it is, it can boast about great things. Just think how large a forest can be set on fire by a tiny flame. And the tongue is like a fire. It is a world of wrong, occupying its place in our bodies and spreading evil through our whole being. It sets on fire the entire course of our existence with the fire that comes to it from hell itself. We humans are able to tame and have tamed all other creatures, wild animals, birds, reptiles and fish. But no one has ever been able to tame the tongue. It is evil and uncontrollable, full of deadly poison. We use it to give thanks to our Lord and Father and also to curse other people who are created in the likeness of God. Words of thanksgiving and cursing pour out from the same mouth. My friends, 
This should not happen. No spring of water pours out sweet water and bitter water from the same opening. A fig tree, my friends, cannot bear olives. A grapevine cannot bear figs. Nor can a salty spring produce sweet water. This reading is very strong and explains very well how destructive our tongue can be if we allow it to gossip, talk negatively about people, it can cause untold damage. It's good to reflect on how we speak. Do we build people up or knock people with our speech? Is our speech positive or negative? Psalm 12, 3 says, May the Lord silence all flattering lips and every boastful tongue. Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. Use words to empower people. 1 Peter 3.10 For whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Ephesians 4.29 Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Proverbs 15.1 A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Psalm 141.3 Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Psalm 34.13 Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Proverbs 13.3 Whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. He who opens wide his lips comes to room. There is great wisdom in the Bible and I think the Bible says it best and the words speak to our hearts where we need to hear a word of encouragement etc. We will hear exactly what we need to hear to help us along our spiritual journey. As we are all unique individuals with our own specific needs and God knows us intimately as shown in the following beautiful psalm. Psalm 139, 1-18 You search me and you know me. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You understand my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down. You are aware of all my ways, even before a word is on my tongue. You know all about it, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go to escape your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in Shoal, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle by the farthest sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, Surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me. Even the darkness is not dark to you, but the night shines like the day. For darkness is as light to you, for you formed my inmost being. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
marvelous are your works, and I know this very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All my days were written in your book and ordained for me before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is their sum. If I were to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. And when are awake, I am still with you. This psalm speaks of we are never alone. God knows us and is always with us. Next painting, very, very soon, watch this space. Until then, remember, there may be a good reason why I've got one mouth and two ears.